Hi everybody, it's Luke from Foot Tech and we have something a little bit different today. Uh, we are with Sophia Harris from Apollo Nutrition. Um, she's going to give us some hints and tips today about keeping children healthy from a nutrition point of view during the lockdown. Um, some of the stuff you can be doing as parents, some of the things that you probably need to be thinking about. Um, I'm going to hand it over to, to Sophia, I'm going to ask her a few questions. Guys, if you have any questions after this, please get them into us because Sophia will happily help out. Um, she understands it's going to be a, a tough time as we do. So we just want to make sure that kids are obviously active enough, but also they're eating the right things. Um, so, Sophia, thank you for coming along to speak to us or coming to a, a camera to speak to us. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> um, so, nice nice one to start with then. How, how can kids eat well at the minute with limited options for parents? Okay, so... I think with a lot of stuff, with what's going on, it's about thinking outside the box a little bit. Um, and I don't know about you, you, but when I've been going to the supermarkets, I've not really had any problems. Like there was a week or so where shelves were empty, but I think supermarkets are managing it a little bit better now. Yeah. Um, so I don't think the limited options are potentially as much of an issue, but obviously if you go in for the fresh fruit and veg and fresh meat, and there's nothing there or what you're looking for isn't there get to the freezer section you know all supermarkets have loads of fruit and veg that's frozen it's obviously going to last you a lot longer as well and they all have great ranges of frozen meat and fish that's always such a good option um and i think now more than ever obviously we've got to be ensuring that kids are eating well and they're getting a fully balanced diet it's so important to keep their immune system strong with everything that's going on um and I think as well, if we are including the kids in their food choices, so I'm not saying allow them to pick everything that they want to eat because that obviously might not work very well, but most families have sort of set evening meals that they eat as a family and maybe set lunches with new structures because obviously parents are working from home. So if we can give the kids some options and some choices and they almost, you know, the parents go out and do the weekly shop, however they do that, and then give the kids a range of options come up with some sort of timetable and let them put what different meals they want on eat different evenings and if they feel that they've had some sort of contribution they're far more likely to be willing to get involved um and there's so many different healthy family meals that people can be making so things like spaghetti bolognese is brilliant uh, pasta bakes stir fries roast dinners can be really really healthy uh, lasagna, chilies, curry, soups, anything like that that you can make a big kind of batch of. A lot of them as well, you can blend different vegetables into sauces so kids won't even realise how much veg they're actually eating. Um, and I think as well with homeschooling, so I know that'll be a struggle for some parents, I don't envy them <laughs> at all. Um, <laughs> it must be really difficult. But you could even look at doing like a cookery lesson with kids to prepare your evening meal and get it all. I'm not saying be giving them knives to chop stuff up, but get them peeling stuff, get them helping you wash fruit and veg. And again, if they feel that they're helping you out, they're going to be far more likely to be happy to sit down and, and eat a proper healthy home cooked meal. Yeah. Because um, they feel that they've had something to do with, you know, putting it all together. Good. Yeah, I think that's great. We, we, uh, we were talking yesterday, myself and Nick, about you know, getting some of the life skills stuff involved with this and, and, you know, not just from our point of view going out and playing football, but yeah, doing stuff like cooking together and gardening and things like that. And, and, and you're right in what you yeah. said. I think if you can, uh, getting kids to eat healthy is a task at times, but I think involving them in that process, like you say, could be a good thing. And the batch cooking, the homeschooling, doing your, doing your own work as well, plus making tea and, and, and putting the household out, it's it's hard, isn't it? So batch cooking at the minute might be the way forward for a lot of parents. Um, of course it is. And I think we've, you know, we've got an opportunity now, like you said, with some of the other stuff like gardening, with the homeschooling, if parents are off work or having to work from home, time would normally be a barrier as to why we can't get kids involved with cooking and why we have to rush around and do all the jobs ourselves. Whereas we've got a bit, a lot of people have a bit more time on their hands to be able to include their kids in this sort of stuff and like you said the life skills side of it is is really important as well definitely um so from 
with regard sort of food and things and, and looking more now at, at vitamins that kids aren't going to be outside as much now so there's obviously stuff like the vitamin d issue and things but can you can you sort yeah. of tell me more about what vitamins are going to be essential for them right now and how they might be able to to get them yeah definitely so vitamin c really really important um and if you do have a fully balanced diet with you know different ranges of fruit and vegetables it's actually really really hard to be deficient in vitamin c kids need two portions of fruit and two portions of veg a day ideally um which with a couple of healthy snacks in there is is quite achievable but you've got vitamin c so a lot of people think of oranges which are great for vitamin c but it's also in kiwi strawberries broccoli was a strange one <laughs> tomatoes peppers kids quite often love peppers you know you can easily make um a big batch of fajitas full of tomatoes full of peppers something like that that's a really great family cooked meal that's got loads of vitamin c in it um so you know if your kids aren't big on fruit and veg and you do really struggle to get them to eat it then i'd definitely be considering a vitamin v a vitamin c supplement um just to make sure their immune system is where it needs to be with everything that's going on another couple of things that are essential for kids um vitamin d like you said and calcium so calcium is really important for their bone development their teeth their muscles to grow properly as well um and calcium is in dairy products and we often find kids aren't that keen on dairy products but um you know milk yogurt and cheese full of calcium but again if your kids aren't fond of that sort of stuff um a supplement for calcium is recommended you need to be looking at anything between 400 to 600 milligrams just depending on on the age of your kid um and in fact i remember when i was younger i used to love did you ever used to, or you might still eat it now, tinned salmon with the bones in? Oh, I, I used to love it <laughs> when I was younger. I don't know if this is really weird, but those bones are full of calcium. Really? Sorry, what did you say? I was going to say... I, yeah, I, those little bones in... I love yeah, salmon. Yeah, tinned salmon. I love salmon. And tinned sardines, the bones. <laughs> the bones are full of calcium, so that's great if your kids love that. But... Um, vitamin D is essential to be able to absorb calcium. So you could be eating all the right foods or taking a calcium supplement, but if you don't have enough vitamin D, then your body's not going to be able to use it efficiently. Um, now, obviously, vitamin D, the best place to get it from is the sun, directly from sunlight. But there's a couple of issues with that. The first is we don't want kids to be burning. And the second is the weather in Britain isn't great. And, you know, last week we had some really nice sunny weather, but the last few days have been pretty rubbish. So you actually only need 30 minutes um, in decent, so with decent sun exposure to get enough vitamin D for the day. But it does have to be exposure to your hands and to your face. So that is without sun cream as well. So obviously as it gets hotter, that's a bit more of a risk. Mm. And with things the way they are now, kids are going to be inside more. Um, and if they're not getting that sunlight, vitamin D, again, is really hard to get from your diet. Um, it's not in very many foods. So you've got fatty fish, you've got fatty meats and egg yolk. Again, foods that kids probably aren't too keen on. Um, but you can get fortified products that are full of vitamin D. So they've got added vitamin D. Cereals are a really great option. And a lot of milk um, has vitamin D added in it now. Um, orange juice can sometimes have it added in, but we've got to be careful with the sugar content of these products because, um, you know, it's not worth getting vitamin D in foods that are then going to make our kids overweight. So it's just that balance and finding potentially a lower sugar cereal with some added vitamin D and then some milk, you know, with, with vitamin D added into it. And that would be a great healthy breakfast option. Um, and yeah, if you're struggling to get them to eat anything with it in. And again, like we've said, the weather in Britain isn't great or reliable, then a vitamin D supplement uh, would be something to consider. And again, you want, it's about 400 to 600 IU um, that you'll need just depending on the age of your kid. But, you know, you can be eating calcium or taking a calcium supplement, but if your vitamin D isn't where it needs to be, then your body's just not going to be using the calcium efficiently. Cool. Um, 
just as you were talking about vitamin D, the sun came out and just completely blinded me during that whole part. <laughs> Uh, well, there's, it's uh, a lot of people think even just sitting in a window is good for vitamin D, but it's got to be proper exposure on your skin through a window. It's not going to work. Uh, and we do know as well that dark skin needs more exposure than, than lighter skin. Right. And I, th I think a big thing, Sophia, is going to be boredom and snacking because yeah. we all do it whether you're kids or adults if you're bored you <laughs> this is the biggest problem with my clients right now i'm doing a lot of work with them on this <laughs> well it's true you, you just eat for eating sick and i think the fact that children yeah. are going to be at home where yeah. the world is going to be biscuits and sweets or whatever maybe in the in the cupboard and they might be spending a lot of time doing nothing some of the days you know, so so what? What have you got any tips around that, and what you can do to what parents can maybe do to even yeah. help? I mean, it's the same. It's really the same uh, tips that I give to my clients. So adults can probably take something from this as well. But so boredom eating, it's a habit. Obviously, it's trying to fill that time with something. So giving the kids other stuff to do, which I appreciate, can be difficult if parents are busy trying to work or sorts of out at home. Um, but replacing them going to eat with something else and ideally something practical so they're using the hands so whether it's like arts and crafts painting drawing I know kids love like is it we fit that they play games on the tv and stuff like that get them outside playing in the garden like you said helping you out with gardening um, obviously if it's safe and they can play or do some of your football challenges anything like that that's going to get them moving get them outside and take their mind off food is just brilliant for them you know from a physical respect as well um another thing that i do a lot of work with my clients that might be well it definitely will be over and above capacity for a lot of what kids would want to take on but mindful eating um and it's something parents can think about as well so everyone everyone's routines have changed you know normally people are rushing around in the morning you sit down and grab some breakfast at seven, half seven, take the kids to school and then get on the way to work. And now everything has slowed down a little bit. So we don't have that morning commute and we're in a lot of routines with food. Um, and actually, are you hungry at half past seven in the morning or do you just eat breakfast at that time? Because it's the only chance you get and you want your kids to eat something before they go to school. And it's just thinking a little bit. Are you eating because you're hungry or out of habit? And if you can push your meal times back a bit and make a smaller gap between your meals, I'm not saying leave yourself until you're starving because then you're likely to overeat, but waiting until you are genuinely hungry and you'll probably find, you know, that kids would be happy playing a bit in the morning. Or I think Joe Wicks is doing like uh, PE sessions that a lot of kids seem to be loving. So give them a bit of time after that. And if they're eating a bit later and there's closer gaps between the meals, they're not going to get as hungry and they'll be less likely to snack um there's you know there's loads of healthy snacks you can get as well and if those sorts of highly palatable junk foods like chocolate and biscuits and crisps aren't in the house it's good for us as well as them <laughs> um and you know if it's not there they're less likely to be obviously able well they're not going to be able to get it it's what we bring into the house that kids eat and you can do so i get my clients doing loads of healthy baking and again to increase fruit in intake and some vegetables as well it's a really good idea to again get the kids involved do a bit of a homeschooling cookery class and i've got recipes like sweet potato brownies you can make healthy carrot cake you can make oat muffins with apples and bananas in flapjacks with berries in you can make homemade ice cream with fruit you can even make pancakes with a banana and an egg and that is just so healthy. Um, or you can just think of healthier snack options, like chop up loads of vegetables and get some tomato salsa and hummus. And if that's, you know, one of the only options, if they're genuinely hungry, they'll eat it. You know, you can make healthy snack bowls with fruit and popcorn. Dark chocolate chips is great because they're less likely to overeat it compared to milk chocolate and it's not got as much sugar in. Um, but I just think being aware of one what's in the house, it's great for us because we're going to be getting more bored and potentially overeating as well. 
and getting them involved with some healthy baking. We were talking about this before. I'll put something together for you guys to send out with some recipes on. Um, but it's just, it's great to get the kids involved with stuff like that. And again, you know, if they're feeling involved and if they're learning how to cook and think about ingredients and food for themselves, it's just giving them, you know, it's making the best of the situation and really helping them again, just, just think about food a little bit more. Definitely. And I think uh, I, I can, um, the sweet potato brownies that you put out on Instagram the other day looked incredible. So uh, I think, yeah. Oh. You, I, I, yeah, they are. Uh, they taste so good as well. Um, <laughs> Sophia, thank, thank you for that. It's been good because I think we were talking before, before we started recording this about how parents at the minute have got so much going on and, and health yeah. for the children is obviously a big part of that. And this just might help with the situation and, and hopefully, guys, you've taken something from that. Um, Sophia, where can everybody find more information about you and what you do and anything that you offer? So I'm on Instagram, like you said, or I've got a Facebook page. If you just search for Apollo Nutrition, it'll come up. Um, I've got a website now as well. So apollonutrition.co.uk. And if anyone has any questions that they want to send in to you guys, just bang them over to me and we'll get, you know, I can answer anything. It's not, it's not an issue. And I just think the more support people have right now, while times are difficult, it's, you know, it's all just helping each other out, isn't it? So. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, we'll probably speak again once we get some questions, but thank you so much for your time, Sophia, and uh, we'll speak Pleasure. to you soon. Awesome. Thank you.